Now I'm ready. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming on the podcast. I'll have to do left-handed. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. All right. And uh, oh, we better tap one. Tap oh, one. yeah. Well, hey, Smart thanks for uh, thanks for uh, coming on the podcast, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, I wanted Scott. I wanted to get you on specifically uh, because uh, you can give closer dates from you know. But uh, about a year ago, you bought a mountain bike and you got into the mountain bike scene. So I thought you'd be a good representation of anybody who's trying to maybe wanting to get into mountain biking, and you know maybe you can you know weigh in on that. But before you bought your bike a year ago, was has it been a year? Yeah, it's been a year probably in March. It took two months to get in. Got it in probably May before I got it out on the trails. Okay. Um, did you ride any bikes before then? Man, when I was a kid, I did. I probably hadn't rode a bike in 25 years. BMX bikes when I was a kid, once we started driving, things were a little bit different and just disconnected from it. Enjoyed it, um, was a little more aggressive when I was a kid, but, uh, at 40 years old, aggressive isn't really the thing that I was looking to do. I just needed to get back into shape. So a big motivating factor there was the fact that I got this old dad bod now. And you guys know when, when we were younger, I wasn't always overweight. I was in pretty good shape and, uh, you know, raising a family and sitting around eating tater chips kind of caught up with me and now we're older we're a little more brittle so there's no jumping things and 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 all that stuff or maybe a little bit you guys push me sometimes yeah but, yeah yeah. but that was definitely the motivation behind it was just to get out there spend more time with you guys and uh, try to shed a couple of those pounds for sure and then we brought jake in because he was part of the whole you know help you get started help you get into any kind of questions you asked so what was kind of it all started from what I heard is you rode his bike and you said I'm in. Yeah, man. Uh, so you guys, you guys have been doing this 20 years. You off and on. You probably close to 20 years straight now, right? It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, a long time. So when we were younger and we were in, everybody was in prime shape. Um, you guys were out doing the mountain bike thing, and I just thought, God, it sounds dangerous, right? Like you clip your feet into these pedals and and you go down all these rocky ravines and stuff and. You know, I, I just didn't have it have it in me. It wasn't something I was I was looking to do at the time, but um, I had no idea, literally had no idea all this time that you could ride these bikes without clipping your feet in. For some reason, that was in my head, like the clips. So Jake shows up with this bike, and we're at Kevin's house, and uh, he says, here, man, take it for a spin. And the funniest thing is Izzy, my oldest, is sitting there, and uh, she says, no, Dad, don't get on it. And I'm like, oh, I'll ride it just to show her a thing or two. And two things got me. One, I got on that bike. It's a full suspension bike. And it felt like being on a Cadillac. And it's not what I imagined. I mean, when I was a kid, I rode bikes in the woods. Everybody else would be on dirt bikes. I'd be on the BMX bike, whatever, trying to keep up. I had a mountain bike, but it was like a little shitty one, you know, an old shitty hardtail bike that, I don't know, it was probably like a Huffy <clears throat> brand or something. And uh, I would ride the hell out of that thing. But when I got on this bike, it wasn't what I expected. I expected to be feeling that hard frame and my old man body wasn't going to deal with it at 40 years old and, and not exercising for 15 years. I expected this to be difficult. And I got on that bike and I'm like, wow, like this is actually something that, that I felt like I could go out in the woods and do. And uh, the other thing was you had your flats on. Yeah. And I didn't have to clip in, and I thought, wait a minute, this ain't right. You know, like, this isn't what mountain biking is. I thought you had to clip in and have a speed suit on and a weird-looking helmet and all this Super stuff. light bike. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, man, I just took it, turned around. My kid was worried about me. I came back, and I was like, that's it. I wouldn't say I was hooked, but I knew I, w- I had to get one. And uh, so it was, it was around that time that all the COVID stuff was starting and everybody was ordering all these bikes. And so that wasn't what motivated me. It wasn't that... I needed to get outdoors. I do plenty outdoors. That if anything, I do I have too many outdoor hobbies. Um, it was just I fell in love with that bike. I liked that bike. I liked that I didn't have to clip my feet in, and I could learn that way. And now I'm getting more confident, and I think I'll I'll maybe pick up uh, a, a, what do you call them? The clips or whatever. They're Different called pedals. clipless, but clipless clips. and clips, whatever. I don't <laughs> yeah. Know. 
but anyhow, that's where we're at, man. We're we're getting we're not. I wouldn't say we're hooked, but it's definitely on the high end priorities, like things I want to do during the week. Like the past week that it's been raining, I've been dying. Yeah, I mean, we literally right before we're recording this, me and you just rode six miles. So yeah, I would like to call it seven, but <laughs> I always round up. Round up. Yeah, man, that's so, what I told the family. So after he rode your bike, Jake. Uh, how soon, or maybe you can also uh, come in on this, how soon after was he like, hey, help me find something? Oh, I, I remember, so he, he rode the the bike around Kevin's driveway, and he was like hooked. This is amazing. This is a modern mountain bike, you know, 150 millimeters of suspension, you know, raked out. It was a Santa Cruz Bronson. And Scott contacted me. He sent me a text like pretty – I mean, it was a couple of days later. Like, hey, dude, I'm going to look for a bike. Oh, I was telling what, 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 what I would need to look for. And Scott wasn't the first person because, like, when COVID started, a lot of people started looking for bikes. Right. And people started reaching out saying, hey, I'm looking to get a mountain bike. What should I do? My first thing was, and, and I knew Scott. And Scott rode my bike. So I was like, hey, you're proud. And I know how tall he was. So I was like, okay, here's the size you're looking for, first of all. Um Second of all, I was like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. A lot of people, you know, used to say, hey, start on a hardtail yeah. or you can go. I said, hey, get a really nice bike. You're going to pay an extra, some extra for it. You know, it's going to be expensive, but you're going to have this bike for a while. And you're going to, <laughs> you're going to be glad that you paid extra for the components. They're not going to be breaking down on you. You know, you're going to have a nice bike and we started looking at bikes online, and <clears throat> Santa Cruz makes a great line of of kind of, I wouldn't call them beginner bikes, but it's entry level with really good components, um, full suspension that you're looking for. And I kind of steered him that way. And Scott actually did a lot of research on his own, and he started sending me bikes and be like, hey, dude, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And I was like, yeah, dude, those are awesome. Pull the trigger. And Everything was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> every bike I sent you was awesome. <laughs> but but you were looking at good bikes because like we talked yeah, about it. it. Like, that was the bit, like, that was probably the best advice. That you know I got. what? Here's here's what you you're looking for. You know, full suspension. You want this much travel. This is the size. If you want, you know, what what wheel size you want, and then you started sending bikes. I was like, these are all awesome. You, you you're not going to go wrong with any of these. Yeah, I think where I started was, I was like, well, what can I get a good bike for? Like a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks. Nah, you probably need to take it up a notch. And we started, so I started shopping in a different price range. Right. And then we did start nailing down the components that we felt like were probably most important to have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad we did that. I'm, you know, I'm glad I didn't go a cheaper route and end up with something that's just collecting dust in my garage. That's when people ask me, you know, what should I get if I was looking to get into it? I just tell them, spend the money. Yep. Get something nice that you're going to be comfortable on. It has good components that aren't going to, I mean, I've, I haven't been overly aggressive and rolled it down mountainsides, but I've, I've biffed a few times and, uh, knock on wood, the thing's doing great. Like it's, yeah. it's taken a little bit of a beating. Um, it definitely takes a beating from, I'm 230 pounds. I mean, that's, that's a lot of weight to be on that bike and, uh, it does great. So yeah. a lot of good advice came from you. Yeah. And, and I told a lot of different people were asking me the same question. I told them the same thing and, and I actually would steer them, you know, Hey, go check out your local bike shop. You know, you can get fitted there. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of them didn't have bikes at the time, or they were way back order. So some people went to bike shops, some people went online. So it was it was kind of and it kind of is right now. The if you can find one, get one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you went with the Bronson, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take for that to come in? I want to say it was probably close to two months, wasn't it? It, it seemed like I was waiting six weeks, something like that. Not as bad as some other people. And I, I wish I knew the name of the shop I ordered it from. It was someplace in California. You remember? You were a know. competitive cyclist, didn't you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Aren't they in yeah. California? Uh, Utah. Utah. Okay. So I was way off it. <laughs> I, I've got so many curveballs through all this. I've learned a lot. But um, but yeah, it took, I think, about six weeks. And they were right. They gave me an estimate and said that's about how long it would be. So they kind of hit the nail on the head there. So I wasn't worried about it or looking for it. But. Uh, it came in. Jake come over. New bike day. Apparently, that's a, a big deal. New <laughs> oh, bike day. New he bike was, day is great. I got it. Took his picture. Yeah, You're supposed man. to film it as you put it together. Yeah, I, the thing came in, and really, they did a great 
They, did they not do a pretty good job? Of, like it was. Oh yeah. All we had to do, I think, yeah. was what put tires and or put the wheels on and they did a great and the job handlebars of, and of putting it together. But this stuff comes in this box and it's all foreign to me. Like you're talking about travel and and all this um, 160 millimeters of travel, all that stuff. I, it, I, it's still quite foreign to me. Yeah. yeah. When we get into some of the stuff, it's so simple. It was simple when I was a kid and I was working on a hundred dollar bike, but now <laughs> you're just you know afraid to jump right in and and tear something up because I'm going to break it, right. which is odd because I spent way more on a four wheeler five years ago. And the first thing I did was take it out, try to crash it and beat it up. So <laughs> I, I don't know. It hasn't been the goal to tear this thing up. I really want to take care of it, but, uh, all that stuff was for, I think it was, but to answer your question, yeah, I think it was about six weeks that it took to come in. You know, what, what's funny is, uh, uh, one of our other buddies was also looking at a bike, but you guys didn't even, I mean, you guys are pretty good friends yet. You didn't even talk. And then, you just kind of realize you're both buying mountain bikes in a sense, right? Yeah. So he was he was like right behind me, and it's a guy that uh, I've been friends with for 30 years. And uh, you know, I don't know what his motivations were, but probably <laughs> a little bit of the same of mine. We're getting older. We're not skinny like we used to be. Um, but his took a lot longer to come in, and yeah. uh, that was kind of consistent with what I was hearing. You know, you get out and you go to these online forums, or you talk to your friends. You guys have so many people that you know that are that that enjoy mountain biking. And so I'm all, I was hearing nonstop. Oh yeah. You may never get the thing. And with him, it was first to start out. He was going to get this specific bike. Then they started upgrading things. Cause it turns out that bike wasn't in stock. The suspension wasn't there or all these different parts, you know, as they were building this bike the way he wanted it. <clears throat> and he ended up getting like, I don't know, like a five or $6,000 bike for 3,500 bucks. Cause the company that he was dealing with took real good care of him. But, um, it just that's it's probably still like that. I don't know, but that's the way things were all last summer, at least as far as getting bike parts from bikes. Yeah, uh, I remember uh, going back to like when I first got my bike. I paid five hundred online for a bike, and I was like, man, five hundred bucks that's a lot. And then I paid five hundred for my next bike, and then I finally spot spent fifteen hundred, and it was hard for me. Like the guy was like taking the cash, and I'm like still like, do I need this bike? And then and then I've you know, with the bike in the background, I'm like three or four times that now, you know, and it's just, I remember when I bought a $1,500 bike, I was like, I'm never spending another, like that's the most I'll ever spend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh that kind of comes with the territory, right? Yeah. What I'm learning real fast in this first year is that what you're talking about right now just continues to get worse because the first, nobody mentioned to me when I was buying this thing, you guys just wanted me to get this bike and get out and ride. And as soon as I got it, some of the first conversations, all right, what's your first upgrade? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, upgrade, man, I just paid three grand or whatever for this bike. Like, what do I need to upgrade? My helmet? What, I mean, what's your color scheme here? Yeah, yeah color scheme. Yeah. I'm clueless, man. Like, so we finally, we just got around to putting the fender on. That was my, my thing. <laughs> I, I wanted to get through a full year, make sure I really loved this thing before I went and dumped another thousand dollars into accessories right. and, and all this stuff. Um, at this point now, I know we're back in spring. I missed it all winter. You know, some of my winter hobbies kind of pushed me away from it. Um, spring, fall, winter, fall, winter hobbies. Yeah, but I got the indoor bike now too, so that like at least kept my legs strong. It doesn't do much for my cardio, but kept my legs strong. So I feel stamina wise, I feel better. But anyhow, spring came around, and I'm like itching. I'm itching to get on that bike, and so I went ahead. I just ordered a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you reached out to me, and you got some stuff, and but. Uh, do you think because, you know, you got the mountain bike and it's going into fall, winter and was the whole purchase of the indoor bike because you had a mountain bike and you're like, Hey, I don't want to, I want to, I noticed, you know, weight dropping off in the summer and you're like, I want to maintain yeah, that for sure, man. I, I lost 20 pounds last summer and, uh, nice. you know, I got some other outdoor hobbies that take over winter. I hunt, I fish, I, I do things, I still do things outdoors, but that's a lot of sitting and it's really easy to be lethargic in the winter time and not do anything you know it's 20 degrees outside and i remember asking you guys last fall like hey when winter time comes are we gonna be able to ride this thing are they gonna shut the trails down or what? i was still excited about it and i yeah. hoped that i would carry that excitement into the spring when we started getting more back into the, i don't know you guys travel and do the stuff you probably ride them more in the winter time i literally wasn't doing much with that bike but i wanted to be on it and uh, the time windows that I could be on it, you know, the days are shorter. You know, having kids and stuff, like, 
a lot of winter sports, volleyball and basketball and stuff that I'm taking these kids to prevents me from being able to get out there aside from work and getting taken advantage of those little pockets of, you know, daylight when the trails are dry. So that that was a huge motivation to get that indoor bike. And uh, that was another really good investment because it at least kept me going because starting last year fresh with legs that hadn't done much in 20 years <laughs> an upper body that you don't realize you use when you're biking until you get out there. And you, I heard one of you guys talking about it one time. You don't realize how much you use your upper body. Yeah, man, you do. And this upper body's old. Everything's falling apart on it. Same with the legs. But it was a huge motivation to get that bike. I'm glad I did it. And I could tell already the few times we've been out this year, the cardio is not there. I've never had good cardio. I hope it gets better. But the legs, the strength, the stamina, the climbing the hills, that's all a lot better because of that for sure. That's awesome. So was Jake with you on your first ride on the, the bike? I think at New Bike Day, yeah, I think were, it was. Yeah. yeah, we we assembled it. Jake Jake was like my big brother during that whole experience, you know, just getting stuff together. Um, a lot of you guys answered my questions. You know, I've, we've all been tight for a long time, but uh, you guys all answered all my questions. But on New Bike Day, I swear the kid was freaking. <laughs> More excited than I was. Like, what's, the, what's the big deal here? Yeah. Scott's like, oh, he you know, saying, I got it. I, I don't want to bother you, uh, but I was like, I'll be right over. Yeah. Right <laughs> like, over. I felt like I had yeah, you guys Don't open the box yet. I'll be right over. Yeah, he comes over, man. We rip this thing out. He puts it all together, and I'm like, yeah, I was afraid to even touch anything. <laughs> and the next thing you know, he's like, we're well, going to take it for a ride. And I was still kind of nervous. You know, like a kid with a new – it's basically a freaking dirt bike right. without a motor on it. I got to be the motor. I wasn't really looking forward <laughs> to that. Uh, but I wanted to, so yeah, we, we took it out and, uh, I learned real fast that it was going to be more challenging than what I expected. A lot more challenging, which I was up for. I was, I was pretty excited about it, but you know, that first day it was pretty sloppy. Yeah. But I could tell, so like I could tell his fitness, you know, he was going to work on his fitness, but you know, you ride with somebody, you could tell he's got the balance, yeah. you know, he, he's rode dirt bikes and four wheelers and he knows how to ride something. So just going back in the woods, you could tell that he, he's got it to where it's it's going to come pretty fast to him. And it did, you know. And, and I would just give him a couple points. I really didn't have to give him too much. It's like, keep your pedals level. Don't hit any roots. Watch out for this. You know, work on your momentum, that kind of stuff. You know, work on your gear changes. Other than that, it he, he was great. Yeah, that was it. I mean, you guys did a uh, both did a great job. Every time I would go out, and still now, I mean, I know I lag behind. And you know, when you come out with me, it's going to be a little bit slower experience if we're going to, and I, I don't care if you all took off, I'll catch up eventually. I'll see you in the parking lot, whatever. And you guys know that, but you don't, I mean, it's about getting out there I mean, that's and a part of the spending fun. some time. It's just yeah. going riding with your buddies. You spend know, some time regardless. hanging out. Right. I'm breathing a little heavier than you are. You guys are having conversations with me and I'm just <laughs> dying the whole time, but I'm trying to talk, but it was last year. You guys uh, were definitely real patient with that process with me. And that was huge because. The most frustrating part, getting started, aside from the seat just destroying my ass, like it was, <laughs> it was like it was like a month. Yeah, you gotta it work. Was you like gotta work month, up for that. Man, that yeah. seat killed me. So, uh, see that stuff in the little canister, the purple. You can always try that. I'll show it to you. I don't afterwards. even want to know what that is, man. But when we're talking about it destroying my ass, and you got a little can of stuff. <laughs> I don't want to know. But yeah, we'll talk about that off camera later for sure. Yeah. But the more you, the more seat time, the better. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And even just taking a couple of months off there in the in the winter time and getting that indoor bike. Yeah, it was like starting all over again. And I said, man, I never want to do that again. Like I need to stay on it. So it's nice to have that rain days. I can go down and and get on it for half hour, hour or something. But the other part was switching those gears. That's what was killing me. Mm -hmm. Like once I got, yeah, the first day or two, man, I was all over the trails. I was more concerned with just staying on the trail than I was even thinking about where you guys were at. And uh, once I got that down, man, it's really hard to get down a hill and up a hill without switching them gears fast in and out. And you got the riser post or whatever you call it, you know, with the yeah. seat and, and all that. And there's a lot of buttons to push. And I'm like, I felt like I was flying a damn airplane. <laughs> you know, and it's a it's a mountain bike, but it's really cool. Once you get the hang of that stuff, yeah. you know, once you get the hang of that stuff, like today, I, I felt I like I was in and out a lot yeah. better, you know, way better. So yeah. it, it, it did come quickly, um, but it's it's been... It was nice, I guess, today getting out there and having this big gap and still just 
getting on like like they say like riding a bike. I just yeah. I was on it. I know where everything's at and how to do it. How so, long did it take you to figure out the dropper? Oh, like dude. just to get it to where you're like you know when to use it. You know until I rode a buddy's bike that didn't have one, and until. Mine quit working for a little while. Remember, we had to put oh, some yeah. air in it a while yeah. ago. You guys have all been helping me with that, too. Kevin's been helping me a ton. Um, it took me a while, man, on that seat because I didn't know when I needed it up, when I needed it down. But both of you guys would, would stop me on the trail or slow down. You know, when we were coming to a, a, a little bit more um, technical area, hey, man, we're coming up on this. Here's what you're going to want to do. And then you got to play that back in your head, translate it, and then go. And I would still struggle with that sometimes, you know, and you, you just learn, you get better the more times you repeat it. And, and that's why I still like to ride at EI so much because I'm still learning that trail. Like I know the trails back there pretty good now. So that's why I think if I got those different, uh, pedals, I would maybe be okay back there. I wouldn't take them to DeVue yeah. because every time I've been there, I've wiped out pretty good. So <laughs> it's a little we'll, more aggressive. We'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. But, um, the riser post was a, it was a, is that what you call it? Riser, see, I'm still learning this stuff. Riser post? Dropper. Dropper, dropper post? Yeah. Yeah. You guys call it dropper. Same I call thing. it a riser. Nice. I, I'll yeah, start man. Call, I'll start calling it a riser. Yeah, man, call it a riser. Screw everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it took a while to get used to. But I'm glad I have it, man. If you don't have one, you're missing out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we started on a hardtail. That if, I mean, they weren't really around. I mean, maybe a little bit, and so that seat was always there. Sometimes you would come over that to get behind it to yeah. go downhill. Yeah, it's Rode tough. a lot of shitty bikes before. <laughs> right. A lot of shitty bikes. See, that's all I ever Or, or you'd stop and pull the tool out, and you're like, okay, this is a big downhill section. You know, drop right. it, and then ride the downhill section, stop, pull it back up. Oh, no. Yeah. See, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> See, if I would have bought a shitty bike... I would not. I would probably not be. I just don't have any patience. I would have probably just left it on the trail somewhere and be like, some other kid can. <laughs> well, can go it's better it. when you're younger and you know, like, okay, this is. But well, you guys were always super into it. You know, like you yeah. were highly motivated to do this. You always liked doing this. I always had shitty bikes, but you it was were fun. one of the first ones to get into it. Yeah, and had a hiatus, I guess, for a while, but. Um, I bought a bike and then uh, literally I sold it. And the next week, Kevin and Jake are like, you should get a mountain bike. And I, go, I literally just sold it. <laughs> Dicks. <laughs> they didn't know I had one. I was like, is this for real? They did you dirty, huh? Yeah, I know. That's right. They just started building trails around us right at that time. Yeah. So it's been a while. Yeah. I know, but now they're making hardtails with droppers. So there's no um, shock in the rear, but you still have your dropper option. Yeah, it's just nice to be able to throw your weight around a little bit better yeah. like that. And, I mean, I noticed when when my dropper – can I just call it a riser? I've been calling it a yeah, riser. That's, why, a riser. Pe- that's yeah. why people look at me kind of funny when I say it. I'm like, you know, you're riser. They're like, I have no idea what you're I think everybody gets it. Yeah, keep saying it. Keep saying it. <laughs> it's a freaking riser, Especially man. when you call a company you're like, hey, I'm looking for a new riser. And they're like, oh, yeah. like your bar riser? They send me some <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, when mine quit co- – it just quit coming up. And uh, it would only come up about halfway. And so I'd get in some tricky parts this early this spring before I fixed it. And I'd have to, like, squeeze my legs on it, pull it up. And you get used to just kind of going, well, it's not going to come up. It's just going to be in that fixed position. So I would find, like, this medium range where I wanted it to be. And, man, it sucked when I would get to those hill climbs. Like, you get to a hill climb, you re- I was really missing having that seat right up against my ass where I could rest on it. Especially when the roots are a little wet or something like that, keep some weight on it and and take off. It, it was wearing me out, so it was nice to get it fixed. Today was maybe only the first time I've rode it since I fixed it. Really, first or second time, yeah. Um, so when you first got it, like the, I remember you were telling me a story that some yeah the guy that didn't have one, you said you were following him around, and you're like, his seat's not going down. So you were trying to use his thing, but then you found out later he didn't even have one. Well, that's it, man. Like, I'm always <laughs> in the back. Like, I just i am more comfortable back there, especially with all you guys who are more experienced. I can watch. I can learn. I can pay attention to what you're doing. Even today, I was listening to you switching your gears and not thinking that I'm in different gears. That, that kind of hung me up a couple of times because I was like, oh, he clicked up a couple of times. So I clicked <laughs> up a couple of times. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in the wrong gear, right? So... Uh, but yeah, being behind uh, our other buddy with the without the dropper, yeah, it would throw me off, man. Because I'm like, okay, I would always be watching your seat, or I would always be watching your seat. And if you take it down, I'm like, oh yeah, there's a little 
different spot coming up and it would remind me that that spot's coming up in the trail and i'm with tony and i'm just following along and uh in the creek beds and i'm getting racked in the nuts and i'm struggling to get up out of out of the hills and back down and yeah man it's uh it's nice to have it's nice to have for sure so once you get the bike you're kind of feeling it and then i know i remember uh i saw you you know it's you're a beginner, and uh, I was like, I noticed you were kind of still like going into a turn, but you're kind of more like straight up. And uh, I told you to trust your tires, and has that helped out? Yeah, we actually we had a fun conversation about that today because it was a little uh, it was a little greasy in some spots. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's honestly been times where I've come out of a section where I was in a little greasy spot, and I was like, damn, those tires they do bite. So I give props to Homer for telling me like trust those tires. There's also been other times where I've gone through a little greasy section, and I'm like, what the hell are these tires for, man? Like, I just went over the handlebars a month ago at EI. Just, I mean, basically full Scorpion when you were talking about it. I yeah. just face planted in the mud over the front of the handlebars, and it was just, it was a little greasy spot. So, but for the most part, they do hook up pretty good. I mean, they're, they're like dirt bike tires. Th- those problems that I've had have been me not throwing my weight around properly, right. me not trusting them. So I get my weight on the high side of the bike or something like that. And honestly, that's when I – were you with me when I wrecked the crotch rocket all those years ago? 20? Yeah. It's been 15 years. You took, took, oh, yeah, you took, took me to the hospital. Though, yeah, you yeah, took me to the hospital. Yeah, I did. I had to ride that baby home, man. I was beat up a little bit. but you did. <laughs> took you it took to me. the ER. Yeah, riding with 10 guys. Nobody takes the guy to the hospital. You ride the bike back, man. You're on your own. I ride the bike back. Jake, can you take me to the hospital? Because I'm starting <laughs> to stiffen up a little bit here. <laughs> uh, I, I, it sounds like you don't hang around with those guys too much more. No, 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 no. They're all good dudes, though. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, it was the same thing then. It was just not trusting the tires to grip yeah. and throwing your weight in, you know. And, and if you don't commit all the way, then you can get yourself in some real trouble. And I'd say probably half of my half of my crashes, which have only been a few, have been because of me not trusting the equipment. To yeah. do what it's supposed to do. Because people that have more experience that do know what they're doing get through those sections, no problem. I mean, seven or eight other bikes that day that I wrecked that crotch rocket went right through the turn, no problem. I come up over the rise, see the turn, and I'm like, oh, man, I tried to get into it, didn't trust my equipment. So you definitely, that's part of it. It's a little a little head game there. Yeah, like today I was there was a berm and nothing crazy. I was like, hey, don't break, see what, and just kind of ride it. And it... it it's hard because mental you want you're like man i'm going too fast or i'm going to fall over right but uh i I'm, you mentioned what you did How, how'd you do through that so it's so much more aggressive than this time even late last year like even when my stamina was better my fitness was better my trust for the bike was better late say late july mid-august i still wouldn't have gone through that section as hard as i did today uh but there was a point and i've been trying to to tackle some of these obstacles a little bit better. But there was a point about halfway through where I decided to put my foot down, you know, which I've done sometimes, or sometimes I'll throw a knee out or something just to jerk my weight over a little bit. Oh, I thought it was style. Nah, man, there's no style (laughs) points. You guys have seen it, man. There is no style points out there with this guy. I mean, hell, every time I show up, there's something wrong with my my gear or whatever, but we get through it. It was definitely not style points. Um but I about bit it there, man. Just stuck the leg out, and it got my weight off balance. And it's like, damn, I should have just stuck with these tires. Rip, man. They're Maxxis tires. They're, that's the stuff that I used to put on the dirt bikes and the quads. Like, they're good. That's a, again, it's a dirt bike without a motor on it. So yeah. I got to learn to trust it a little bit better. But that stuff's going to happen, too. I'm starting to get used to the crashing thing, like, as I get a little dialed up a little bit more. That's definitely part of it. It's, yeah, I've noticed because I've seen you both go over the handlebars a couple of times. It's, now. it's not if, but when. <laughs> well, That's, let's uh, lead. It makes me feel better that you guys have walked away from some of those. So. so let's lead into that. So you're riding EI, and I'm telling these guys that, but you, well, maybe you're on the group chain. I don't know. I want to push you to Davu because you're. I just don't want you to get in my mind. I don't want you to just kind of plateau. I mean, I know you you want to eventually, but I'm like, let's ramp it up for him. Let's let him. Sure, I thought you were just bored. You were just <laughs> bored. Were you just bored at EI, or you were trying to like help me get better? I wanted to get, I want to see you get better. That's cool. I appreciate that, man. But, you did. Uh, you were on my ass last year. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I 
Kevin was always on my ass. Ah, oh, you're good. Keep going. Let's wrap. <laughs> like day, I'm like, ah, oh, day two here. <laughs> Kevin's kind of. Kevin kind of looks at me like I still got diapers on right now. He's like, oh, are you sure you're gonna be? Okay? But, but uh, I get it. So he we go to the. Hey, it's the best way to you know. Progress. Yeah, man. I appreciate you guys have been patient. Yeah. Uh, actually, before I get into that, following us, what is that? Does that help you a lot? Because you just mentioned oh, you, were, sure. you were trying to look at my chain. Yeah, man. Always in the back. Like, And there's sometimes where you guys will say, hey, man, come up in front of me. And I know, like, 